Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, as you come into church uh, this morning, you see that things have changed. Uh, that there are uh, a, a new uh, greenery and that normally we'd be wearing purple. Now, alejandro has got the right color on, uh, which is purple, uh, or you might see blue. Uh, today we have a baptism, so uh, I'm in white, uh, but it is Advent. It's the first day of the Christian year, and I want to talk to you about Advent just for a little bit this morning We don't really know how it started. No, I'm serious. Like, we really don't know where Advent came from. (laughs) I mean, it just kind of appears uh, in the tradition of the church. You probably thought, oh, Jesus made Advent. No, Jesus didn't make Advent, no matter what the Advent police will tell you. Uh, We do know that about the 5th century, a particularly uh, dutiful bishop, Bishop Perpetuus, well, like that would be the bishop who would start something like this. <laughs> Perpetuus told all of his, the members of his church that they had to uh, fast uh, and prepare for the celebration of the incarnation for Christmas. Um, and uh, it just was a little tiny thing. It just started in a little diocese uh, of tours. And people thought, hey, that's a great idea. So let's all start doing it. So it began to spread a little bit, um, and it was growing uh, for about 400 years. It was like everybody was into Advent. I mean, it was like the thing going in the church, like let's all do Advent. And then Charlemagne came along, uh, and so by the 13th century, everybody had forgotten Advent. Uh, And so the focus was back on Christmas. There was no Advent being celebrated hardly anywhere. But then came along Pope Urban, and he was uh, uh, decided that uh, we needed Advent again. And so he brought it back up, required the whole church now this time. The whole church was going to do Advent. And I still haven't told you what it is. I'm just telling you that just all these practices were going on, and people were finding different ways to prepare for Christmas. The idea being that it's a great second greatest feast day in the church is Christmas. Uh, and that we ought to do this. And then comes along uh, uh, Vatican II, which, you know, you could throw that around at parties and stuff if you want people to look at you. But uh, what's important to know in Vatican II, they, they decided the church, the Catholic church, Roman Catholic church, decided that we shouldn't be so penitential, that, that, that Advent should be much more prayerful and uh, preparatory, but, but not like Lent. It was, it's a different type of season. Advent evidently had kind of a uh, complex and needed to have its own sense of things. Uh, And so, uh, you know, today uh, in the kinder, gentler church that we are, we have have Advent, uh, a season of preparing. Most of you might know Advent because of the Advent wreath, a time when you have four candles and each week you light a candle in your house. and, you know, that, what that really means is each week you light one candle and then for three weeks you forget. And then it's the week before Christmas, so you light all four of them uh, because it's been sitting there at your table and you feel guilty about it. But I, I want to actually step aside from all of that history. And I would like to invite you to a different kind of Advent this year. I would like just to give you some things that I think might be helpful. Okay, a little practical Advent advice from your bishop. So the first thing is, 
Whatever you do, just begin with this. Be curious about the meaning of the incarnation. How God becomes man. Be curious about that. Listen. <laughs> Look for signs out in the world. But wonder, how is that even possible? Consider that Christ has become real in human form and that this actually has meaning for Christians. Imagine this incarnate God that changes how we see ourselves and how we see other people. What I'm suggesting here is a deeper theology than just preparing for Christmas. But being curious about what happens in the understanding of each human being when God becomes man. What it does is that regardless of color, shape, ability, language, there is a pre-existing, a pre-descriptive, if you will, body for all of us. And that is first and foremost the body of Christ. And that there is a moral imperative for us as Christians to see Christ in each other before we see anything else. So I'd like to invite you to spend some time over the next couple of weeks seeing the people in front of you, no matter who they are, no matter where you find them, no matter what you're talking about, to see them with the eyes that are curious about how they show you the body of Christ before you come to them with any descriptions about who they might be. Start there. Just that's easy. You just you could write it down if you need to put it in your pocket. Especially when you come up against that person that you dread talking to all the time. Then you could grab hold of that piece of paper in your pocket and remember Oh, wait, I'm supposed to see the person of Christ in this person. So ponder the incarnation. The second thing is regular worship. Now, you're going to say, right, Bishop, of course, that's what you'd say. Come to church regularly. That is what I'm going to say. And, I, and you're going to say, well, I'm traveling to visit Aunt Susie. Well, I bet Aunt Susie goes to church. So don't give her an excuse to stay home on Sunday. And you go to her church or your uncle's church or wherever you are. Go to church. Attend worship during this season intentionally. Why? To remember it's not all about you. <laughs> to actually come into a place where you worship a God bigger than you on a regular basis. Just remind yourselves that all of this is not about what you get, but it is about coming, literally coming before God and giving your very best in song and prayer to that God. Think of it as mimicking the shepherds to come and the kings in epiphany. I'm not just making this up, but this is what I think it's about. It's coming to worship. So go to worship every week. Prayer. Private prayer. Now I know how you all pray. I, I, Bishop, I like to pray every day on my way to work. While I'm sitting in the car, I like to listen to a little Christian music and pray to God. I like to pray, Bishop. I, I like when I'm working out. I like to pray when I'm running. That may be true. And there is nothing wrong with any prayer. I mean, any prayer you can manage to send up to heaven at any moment in time is a good prayer. So don't, I'm not trying to diss other kinds of prayer. But what I'd like to say is in Advent, could you do it daily? Maybe before you, when you get up and have that cup of coffee, or maybe before you go to bed, spend, I'm just asking for five minutes. You don't have to be a monk. 
Just give five minutes to our Lord in quiet prayer and see what happens. There's not that many days. You can do anything for 30 days, people. And you don't even have that. You're going to have 24. Well, you could start today and add up. Our Lord would be happy with that. But pray. I think this is really, really important to pray. And the last thing I want to suggest that you do is do some good works. Now you say, well, you know, the church pantry is only open one time. Nope, that's not what I'm talking about. I would like to invite you in the season of Advent to do something good for somebody in your life at home, at work, in the grocery store, somewhere. Just do something nice and good. And here's the thing. Don't tell anybody. Let it just be a private offering of service to the Christ and the other person. Just do something good every day. Try to do something. Let them in front of you in line at Starbucks. I'm taking anything at this point. <laughs> right? Something nice every day. You might keep track of it, but keep it to yourself. Private offering to God. Now you're saying, well, this isn't, this isn't a big deal. I, I, I can't believe it's not. Listen, you and I have spent two years, and we spent two years fighting politically. We spent two years in COVID, and we're not out yet. But what I know is I don't want to do anything that doesn't make a difference in my life anymore. And I really don't want to do much that doesn't make a difference in somebody else's life. In other words, if I'm going to spend time doing something, I would like to get the most out of it and also share it with the most people I can. And that's what I, one of the things, one of the many things I learned in COVID. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. And here is the chance to make this Advent different than every other Advent that has come before you in a long time. To make this Advent matter religiously in a new and different way where you are transformed by contemplating that Christ is God incarnate and changes the world in which we live for the good and that people in your life may see your goodness and that Christ in you as you serve them. So I hope you'll have a good Advent. Listen to the hymns and to the words and the prayers and take it with you from this point on throughout the whole season. And I guarantee if you will practice those simple things, you will be transformed by the gospel of Christ in ways you cannot even at this moment imagine. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop. And spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.